If you could implant in the minds of um, the good majority of people on this planet a single idea, what would that idea be? I think it's got to be the idea of optimism, that all evils are due to lack of knowledge. Wait, 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 wait. So you just gave a definition of optimism there that is not what most people think of as optimism. Most people think of optimism as a feeling of hope about the future. Your definition is different. So so explain that. Well, well, hope that isn't based on an explanatory theory is rather, I mean, isn't it, isn't that what they call a vain hope? (laughs) Yes. Uh, It's, it's whistling in the dark. Optimism, as I define it, has to do with knowledge. It's not a prediction of the future. It's an explanation of failure. If you explain failure as being inevitable or due to some malevolent force, insuperable malevolent force, or uh, just the way things are, then that's a recipe for stasis, which is a recipe for failure and eventually death. Therefore, I think that all failure has to be explained in the form, the reason we didn't succeed is that we didn't know how to. Mm. And the knowledge of how to is in principle attainable. We don't have it now, but we could have it in the future if we do the right thing. Mm. Uh, In fact, it follows from this whole conception of knowledge that we've been talking about all this time that optimism has to be true. Otherwise, there would be a limitation, which would mean uh, the supernatural and and all that stuff. The, the, The arguments are watertight all the way from the scientific worldview to optimism, in my view. So here's here's how I would distill this David Deutsch worldview, which I have to say, David, I, I, <laughs> I find quite an in, inspiring worldview. So so here we are, this Homo sapien, you know, we've we've had this um, surprising moment of liftoff where we're able to create new knowledge, new understanding, but it's a fragile thing. It's full of errors, full of mistakes. Yes, yes. If we could inspire everyone out there to adopt the mindset that knowledge was precious and that when things go wrong on our planet, it's not because there's some evil force there that needs punching in the gut and, and uh, spitting at. It's, it's just because we, 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 we're not understanding something. And, uh, and our job and our duty is to seek to understand, to look for those errors, to correct them. And if we were to adopt that mindset, then um, there's, there's, literally no limit to the journey that we can go on together, a journey of growing knowledge and um, unlimited creativity um, and uh, kind of like lives of wonder and so forth. I mean, that's, that's what I take from you, that knowledge is not a thing for schools, libraries or whatever. It's this superpower that humans have developed if they're willing to look at it the right way. Well put. I agree. And we must also expect to make lots of mistakes. So Indeed. it's not just, you know, but just, just knowing that the problem is to create the knowledge doesn't mean we, there's not an automatic way of creating it. In, in fact, it's conjectural. We're going to make many mistakes. That's why we have to set up institutions that can correct them. And so mistakes should be viewed as, as gifts in a way. So long as yes. you learn from them and adjust as a result of them, they're a gift. Yes, yes. John Wheeler said that our whole problem is to make the mistakes as fast as possible. <laughs> 